Hello everybody and welcome back to Average Guy Reviews. Today, due to some bad weather and windy conditions, I haven't been able to do any of my flight videos for the last quad in the Battle of the Budget Quad series. So today what we're going to look at is camera quads and the differences between them. I've been hearing a lot of things about the Simas being compared to the Phantoms and, you know, the cameras on them are not real great and I've seen a lot of people do a lot of modifications so I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of compare the two um, even though it's really apples to oranges um, and talk about some of the modifications I've done to the two Sima X8s that I own and the cameras I'm using and we'll get into some video footage from all three of these quads uh, here at the end of the video but we'll sit down and take a look at each one and the modifications done so uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the new camera equipment I'm still trying to learn it so please bear with me but we did get rid of that old uh, Sony potato we were shooting with so Hopefully we get some better video quality out of this. Alright, so let's talk about this quad first. This is my Sima X8C number one. We'll call this one number one because this is the cheapest one. So, including the camera I'm into this quad, $99. That's the camera, the quad, this little jello mount right here, and the SD card as well. And this is the stock camera that came with this quad. Now, Everybody will tell you this thing is the biggest piece of junk. The best thing you can do is rip it off and throw it away. And I'll tell you, it really is not great. This camera here, I'll go ahead and insert the video now. It wasn't that bad. Now this one here, it has an adjustable mount so you can tilt up or almost straight down if you want to. Uh, and that was really nice. I like this feature. This came on the first one that I ordered here, uh, X8C1. And uh, I flew it. I took one video with it before my anti-jello mount came in. and I ordered the anti-jello mount before I saw the video on this because I heard really bad things about the jello. Now I had no jello with this one. Um, as you saw in that video, it was pretty clean. Uh, camera quality still leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, I was kind of curious if they were going to do something new with this. I don't really think they have, so we'll get into that here in a second. Now, the second quad I bought, the second Sima X8, Sima X8 number two. This guy here. This one here came with a different camera on it. Well, the camera was the same, but the mount was different. So here's the mount. Obviously I took the camera off. Um, it had a plastic piece up here that I stole to mount the gimbal on quad number two there. But I noticed this one wasn't adjustable. It was a fixed camera and it was looking straight. Um, it also felt pretty loose on there and I didn't know if I really liked that. But upon taking it apart, you can see here, Simon's tried to correct the jello issue by putting in a little piece of rubber here. Now you lose the ability to tilt the camera up and down and all this does is really, really make the jello problem a lot worse. Take a look at this video real quick. Okay, now same camera, same exact camera, different attachment to the quad. I really do not think this made it any better. So if you get one with a mount like this, toss it. Now let's look at the camera. Again, same camera that comes on all of them, but I got a little curious when I was looking in there one day to see if the light was recording and I happened to see another guy do this in a review. Or he tried to take this apart and see if he couldn't fix some stuff that was wrong with it, maybe stabilize it a little more. And look what's inside, it's the most amazing thing. When you take it apart, it's an X5C camera. The same exact one, in fact you can even mount it straight to your X5C. So, 
don't know what Simon was thinking right there. They just kind of adapted the plug for it so you could plug it straight into the quad, but same exact camera. So if you're looking for better video quality with a stock camera and you're thinking about upgrading from the X5C, the X5 or the X8 is not the way to go. You're going to get the same exact camera. So let's talk about what I did. I didn't like my camera quality, so I went around on Amazon and kind of started looking around. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about the SJ4000, but the SJ4000 is still a little more expensive for me. Um, I wanted something cheap. This is more of a disposable camera quad to me, something that I can fly around and take my riskier shots with, something where I don't want to fly my Phantom to get that video. So I bought this. This is a Uning. Uh, 4k Wi-Fi camera now this is pretty much a clone of a clone this is a clone of the SJ six or seven thousand somebody drop that down in the comments if you know uh, but it does come with an LCD screen and it does shoot absolutely really good video um, almost comparable to this quality here I'll go ahead and uh, show you the video I got with this one here after I attached it to this anti-jello mount here. So go ahead and take a look at this. So that was 1080p, 60 frames per second. This will shoot all the way up to 4K, 30 frames per second, but on this mount, on this quad, with all the movement going on, those frames can't really keep up. 1080p, 60 frames per second is actually great for when you're flying. It helps reduce a lot of your jello, and it also gives everything just a lot smoother look. Now, the fuzziness in this image is partially due to the editor I used. Um, I wasn't really happy with the results there, but I mean, it, it's a good example. Um, I'm sure you can find a lot of image quality tests and stuff like that. If you look on YouTube, search the SJ6 uh, or 7000 uh, action camera. Now, I picked this up for $35. $35 well spent. It came with a lot of accessories, a waterproof case, good to 90 feet. The waterproof case is a brick, so I wouldn't suggest putting the waterproof case on, but when we start talking about this mount here, I'll show you that you actually can put the waterproof case on and the camera is capable of being inverted and you can flip the video around so that it looks right. But highly suggest this camera. I may do a review on it in the future as a good little quad camera. It's not very heavy um, and it does fly very well. It's not a very big noticeable change when you drop it on here, but the video quality and the anti-jello with this and this mount combined is absolutely worth the $45 I spent. So let's jump into the quad and the mount here. So we'll be doing a review on the quad later, but I just want to talk about some of the upgrades and modifications that I made to this quad. Uh, first thing I did, $5.83 for some extra tall DJI Phantom landing gear, and they do just screw right on there. No modification needed, just your same two screws. Everything lines up. It is that close to the size of the Phantom. Um, in fact, as you saw there in the beginning, it may even be a little bit bigger. But let's get into this, the anti-jello mount. Now this anti-jello mount I picked up for $10 on Amazon uh, from the BTG store, and it is a BODRC anti-jello mount. It is made specifically for the Sima X8. So this is one of the reasons I bought this. I didn't know if I wanted to make modifications that required a lot of effort, so I wanted to go cheap so I bought this for ten dollars you get this nice little anti jello mount with these four little rubber balls and it does just slide as you can see I'll show you here the the mount slide right into that same little spot so literally I pulled this out of the mailbox straightened it up and I just took it and slid it right into place and it locks right in, it's not going anywhere. 
you can hold the quad upside down by it. It's it's really really it's worth the ten dollars. So if you're not wanting to do major modifications but you want to fix some of your jello, this is going to be the way to go if you want to stay on the cheap. Now with all of this, like I said, $99, you get some pretty good video. But the problem is when you're flying around and you're fighting the wind, you're tilting side to side, and you're going front to back, and you know, this is a manual quad. It's not GPS, it doesn't have that GPS lock, or it's not ultra stable like the DJI Phantom. So you're gonna need something to keep this camera more steady. Because as you saw in the video of the 1080p 60 frames per second, it was a lot of bouncing around side to side and the camera's doing this and going up and down and it's really hard to keep a steady shot when you have a camera that's just sitting here doing the tilter whirl on you. So that's where we go to quad two. Alright so before we get to quad two let's one more thing about this. This right here is a standard size mount so your GoPro cases will mount to this, your GoPro, GoPro accessories will mount to it as will the SJ action cam and well, what we'll call this cam, but they all come with the same exact accessories. So they all mount to this right here. So that's a really nice plus because I can actually fly it in my waterproof case if I'm going to be flying over water. That way, if I lose the quad and I can recover the quad or camera, at least I can save my footage and get my camera back. And then I'm only out the $48 that I spent on this quad. Um, if I can find the link to where I bought it, I'll put it down in the description below. And, uh, they were really good about shipping. I think I got it here in three days. Um, and I have Amazon Prime, so it was no charge shipping. Uh, I think I bought it from Store123. So, like I said, check for the link below if you're interested in this quad here. I will be doing a review on it in the future. Um, just wanted to do this thing here today just to kind of have something to put up this week and talk about some of the things I've been reading a lot about lately since this is what's going on with me right now. Um, and we'll get back to finishing off the Battle of the Budget Quads next week, hopefully, when all of this weather finally clears up. Alright, so, moving on. This is Sima X8C number 2. Now, this one is kind of my in-between my X8C1 and my DJI Phantom. So, to get that good quality video, you're going to need something to stabilize your camera. Because as you're fighting the wind and moving around back and forth and all this stuff on this manual flight, your camera on that other quad would be moving all around like this with you too. So I picked up this Walkira G2D two-axis gimbal. So we are controlled on tilt and we are controlled on up and down. We are not controlled side to side. This is a fixed gimbal. Um, it does not slide right onto the quad, but it's a very, very quick and simple modification to make it where it comes on and off of the quad. So We'll talk a little bit about what I did here, and then we'll get into some of the footage that I've gotten with this. Now, I haven't gotten much because, like I said, it's been very windy. Um, in some of these videos, if you pay attention to those trees, you'll see that they're really moving around quite a bit. Um, at times, I'm getting 30 mile an hour gusts. Now, that speaks large, large amounts about this thing's wind resistance. I was flying this with what is easily 220 extra grams hanging off the bottom and one more battery to power this that I'll show you where I put that here in a minute and I was still able to fight these 30 mile an hour winds now obviously you feel it underneath there you feel the quad is very very heavy it's very uh, it's not as nimble and maneuverable and, and it doesn't rock it up like it normally does but nonetheless you get very very stable video so let's get into how I attached this G2D gimbal to the Sima X8C. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this piece of foam. Now, I was cheap about this. This foam came from the packaging. Uh, if you pull out the bottom piece of foam, it's actually two layers. Just peel it apart. And you end up with some nice thin foam that's very good at reducing vibration, so that's a plus. I uh, stole this scrunchie from my neighbor. Um, it's a little rubber green scrunchie. This is what I hold the camera on with. Um, the camera is just a little too thick to be screwed on here with the bracket that comes with it. But with a rubber band on there, or a scrunchie in my case, it does tend to work just fine. Um, I didn't have any movement problems. I also cut out this piece of foam to go in here. 
Um, this does have an LCD screen on the back, so I didn't really want to get scratched up. So this is just back here to protect the LCD screen, and I'm sure it does actually help with some of the jello as well to keep it down. But like I said, as you'll see in the video, totally different. So the question is, what am I into in this quad? Well, if you're going to buy this setup with this camera, the SD card, everything I'm running in here, um, I think it is the gimbal, the quad, the extra battery to run the gimbal, the camera, the SD card, and that's it. I think I'm, oh, and the landing gear. I'm $162 into this setup right here. So for $162, I have a lot of features that the Phantom has. Not nearly all of them, but a lot. I have the stabilized camera, I have the capability of shooting up to 4K, 30 frames per second. Um, I have the ability to shoot in 2.7K, which is what my Phantom Standard shoots in. Um, but the bit rate on it is not quite as high. So you're not going to get the same quality images out of here, but you will get good images nonetheless. And for a budget kind of learn to fly a camera quad or learn to frame shots kind of thing, this is great. Now this does have built-in Wi-Fi. Don't get real excited about that. The Wi-Fi range on it is okay, but the problem you're gonna run into is this is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and this is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so when they're running together, they interfere with each other, and you'll crash. Um, they don't really work well together, so leave the Wi-Fi off on this guy when you're flying this thing. All right, so let's get into the gimbal on this quad here. Um, now let me go ahead and take it off. This is my favorite part about this. I can just take it right off. So, if I want to fly this quad with, let's say, the original camera, I can. I don't know of a time where I'll ever be flying it with the original camera, but if I ever just want to go out and fly around something big like the Phantom, maybe I want to go out and kind of practice flying the Phantom around, but I don't want to risk crashing the Phantom, so I'll take this out there. Um, in some ways, it flies very similar. In others, it flies very, very different. But you take all the weight off of this thing, and it's a rocket. It's fast going forward. It's got a really horrible yaw rate, but it's camera quad. So um, it's also its vertical climb is actually very good too, and it has that same uh, sound and thrill you get from the Phantom, just not quite the same vertical rate of speed. But again, we're talking a quad that is literally a tenth of the price of the Phantom standard. So this is the Walkira G2D gimbal. Now what I did here was I removed the plastic piece, and I don't know if you can see this contrast here. Um, see if I can get my wife to zoom in on this. I don't know if you can see this little white piece here, but there's a little screw hole coming right through here. So this went on the top of that little piece earlier that I was uh, showing you that had the little rubber piece in it where they tried to do their own anti-jello mount. Well, this goes right into it. So there's a little middle piece here that slides out. All I did was mark a hole and drill it in there a little smaller than the screw and then I just kind of started the screw right in there and then right about here there's a little plastic peg that's used to help stabilize it on the Sima that I just went ahead and pressed into another hole and it's on there pretty good. I mean it's not going anywhere. I've crashed with this gimbal on and it barely moved. Um, brushless gimbal. Weighs about 132 grams, I think is what I found online about how much it weighs. 132 grams is not very light, but it's a plastic gimbal. Um, you can go ahead and zoom out if you want. Uh, it is a plastic gimbal, but it does work very well. Now, I can go ahead and strap the camera to it here in a second and show you that it is a, it is a solid gimbal. It's very responsive. It's very quick. Uh, but my favorite part is the ability just to take it and slide it right onto the quad and I'm ready to go. Or if it's time to take it off, I can just take it right off the quad and fly without it. All right, so um, let's talk about this piece here. Um, this little guy here is, uh, it goes in between the quad and the gimbal right here. And the reasoning behind this is my awesome little mounting system is only a very small part of this whole thing and it's right up here in the middle so it left a lot of room for this to move up and down so I figured I'd put this in here kind of tighten everything up and it'll also help dampen some of that vibration 
Uh, but I went ahead and attached the camera to it here for you. And we'll talk about what bothered me the most about putting this gimbal on the quad. Now, I am not one that likes to mess with live wires. Um, so I do not like making modifications to batteries. Now, a lot of people have said that you can modify it right off the board. I don't like messing with the boards. I've done some electrical soldering in my life, but not much. And I do happen to really like my quads. So when it comes to soldering to the board, I'm not ready to do that yet. Um, after a lot of looking around and a lot of studying, a lot of math, figured out what I'm going to do. So it comes with a JST adapter that plugs into the side of the gimbal to power it. Now, after looking at a lot of reviews, I heard a guy say, that he gets 10 minutes of use out of his gimbal on an 11.1 3 cell 150 milliamp lithium polymer battery. The problem is the more cells you have the more it weighs. I wanted to stick with a 2 cell setup. The 2 cells are easier to find and they're cheaper to find in a lower milliamp setup so I found this guy here. It is a 250 milliamp hour lithium polymer 7.4 volt battery. Now this gimbal can run off a 3 cell 11.1 or it can also run off of a 2 cell 7.4 so um, I've heard a lot of people say it really doesn't make a difference with the gimbal it's just capable of running on both of them it's kind of a universal gimbal so I'm sure that's why they did that. Uh, my next problem was where do I put it? Well I thought I had some industrial velcro laying around the house uh, somewhere but I didn't so I had to improvise because uh, one of the things you can do with it is there's plenty of room to fit it right here between the gimbal and the top of the quad. So I was just going to velcro it in right there and plug it in. Um, that didn't work out. And I'm actually kind of happy it didn't work out because I found out where to put this thing. So here's what I did with it. Pop open the battery door, like so. So if you open this little battery door, uh, you can see in here that there's a lot of room inside of this quad. So the nice thing about it is that you can take this battery and just slide it right up the side here and it'll fit right into the side of the quad. You can just kind of stuff your balance port charger up in there like so and you still have all the room you need for your 2000 milliamp lithium polymer battery that powers the quad to go in there. Now you're left with this little JST plug and it's not a whole lot of wire. But that's a good thing, I like that. So I just take it and I slide it right in between this little latch and the door and just go ahead and close it. Now all I have to do is take it and plug it in and the gimbal begins to fire up. I think. And there it goes. Alright, so it's live, it's active, it's got great anti jello and great stabilization. Uh, now, this thing will let you go almost to any degree. So, if as you do tilt all the way forward, you will get propellers in your view. There's really no way around that except for don't go full speed. So, Anyways, you can expect about 10 minutes with this setup and there's no cutting. It's one screw. You remove four screws, put one screw in, drill one hole to mount this gimbal and it's on there really well. The gimbal handles all of it very well. Um, it gets a little out of whack if you do shake it around pretty hard, but you just mess with it for a second it pops right back to normal. Um, you'll hear it run. It's really quiet. It's got a kind of funny sound to it, but 
I think I paid $62 for this gimbal, so totally worth it, and I can insert the video here and we can check out the difference in quality when it comes to the stabilization of shots. just about wraps it up for quad number two here. We'll go ahead and move on over to the Phantom. Alright, now let's get to the Mac Daddy here. Well, the Mac Daddy in my collection, that'd be the DJI Phantom Standard. Now, I love this thing. It is the epitome of what I need for uh, aerial video. It does amazing colors. It has amazingly detailed images. incredibly stable and it's a smaller view range so you don't have this big curved horizon it's a 94 degree view where the action camera that I bought is 170 degrees uh, now this one here is a little bit more stabilized with the gimbal it's a little bit more stabilized with the quad but we're talking there's a lot of variables here we're talking a lot better gimbal, we're talking metal versus plastic, we're talking brushless motors versus brushed. This thing has a ton more power, it's GPS stabilized, it's a lot heavier so it's not as easily pushed around by the wind. It's probably twice as heavy as the heaviest setup which is the Sima X8C2 that I have. So we're still talking this thing's like three almost four pounds fully loaded with the battery. Battery size is also over double the size and the time of flight time is about 10 minutes longer. I mean, I hate when people try to compare these things. This is not a toy. This is one step up from a toy. This is not professional, but this is not a toy. This is really like a hobbyist. So you can't compare these two. Like I said, it's apples to oranges. This thing here, it's an entire quad designed around a camera where the Sima X8 is something that is designed as a quad and the camera's been the afterthought. And the camera's always the afterthought on the Sima X8. So, please, if you're looking at getting a Phantom, get a Phantom. Don't waste your time trying to find something or make something that's going to look like a Phantom. It will never actually end up looking like the Phantom. But, if you're looking for something to get into aerial photography. If you're looking for something to start to learn how to fly something the size of a Phantom, um, there is a very big difference when you go from even the X5C to the X8C. The size feels drastically different. It's like going from a little tiny Mazda Miata to like a souped up sports car that is on like a school bus frame. Like it just feels big and cumbersome, but fast and powerful so it's really a whole different flight experience now when you get to this guy here it's just you know it flies for you and you're more telling it where to go in most cases you're asking it if it'll go there and it'll kind of either do it or it won't but intelligent flight modes on this thing are amazing uh, I love flying it uh, it's a lot more restricted to fly this now all three of these quads in this video today have to be registered with the FAA. They are all over that 0.55 pound mark. So 
they're all getting registered. They all have to have their UAS certification numbers on it. Um, I've left mine off for the video. Um, they'll go back on right after the video, but they all have to be certified. So keep in mind that you do fall under regulations when you fly any of these lot more stringent regulations than you would if you're flying a toy grade one that doesn't have to be registered with the FAA. Um, one other big difference that I think you're going to see with the images you can get from the DJI Phantom versus the X8 is that when you're flying this, the camera can go all the way to straight down or it can go to 135 degrees up. So you can go full forward and it can be flat and you can control based on the top of the controller the position of the camera. So that's something you can't do with the X8C. Now I know that G2D gimbal has the ability to have control uh, in the same sense that the, Sy or that the DJI does, but the Sima X8C really can't take any more weight. When you put that gimbal and the camera on there, you're flying at almost full throttle. So I know these motors aren't going to last long. I've even found on Amazon for $110 a full brushless motor conversion kit. It comes with the brushless motors, the ESCs, um, everything's pretty much pre-wired. It even comes with a new flight board for the quad and a new board for the controller. It, it switches it over to altitude hold and it runs on 7.4 or 11.1 .1 volt batteries. So you kind of get the option. You can use your stock batteries or if you want to go for some more power and more speed, you can bump it up to that 11.13S battery. Um, and it looks like it's a pretty straightforward thing. I think sometime in the not so near future, I will be doing that modification to Sima X8C number two, um, just because it is the one that struggles the most with the power. Sima X8C number one does just fine with that mount and the action camera on it. Um, it's still plenty maneuverable. It's still got plenty of power left in it, but Sima X8C number two, if you get a good gust of wind, it slams that thing on the ground. It just doesn't have the power to fight the downdrafts or the pressure from the wind when you get a good gust. And the last thing I need to do is be flying that quad and get a good gust of wind while I'm high up and come plummeting to the ground because I can almost guarantee you it will break that plastic gimbal. So something else that's one other thing you don't have to worry about this you have the power to stay in the air in fact DJI says you're good up to 22 mile an hour winds in this thing so that's something else that's really nice and if it's a windier day I would rather fly this than a manual quad because I can throw this into GPS mode and it's gonna stay put I can still cruise around just like I can with my manual quad I just don't have to worry about the wind taking off with my quad so don't please final thought here please don't compare the DJI Phantom to the X8C. Very different quads. They're both very good for their class and that's one thing that I want to point out. The X8C is a great quad. It looks bad compared to the Phantom but it is nothing like the Phantom. It's not in the same class as the Phantom. So when you compare toy grade to hobby grade or whatever you want to call what these are, you're really giving the DJI an unfair advantage over the Sima X8C. So just make sure that when you're looking at the Sima X8C, if you're planning on doing modifications, understand this is still a toy grade quadcopter. It is not a DJI Phantom. If the DJI Phantom is what you are trying to achieve, like I said, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Hop on over to the DJI Phantom because you will end up saving money in the long run. You're not going to spend $200 a quad until you finally give up and buy the DJI like I did, you'll just get the DJI. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and insert some video of the DJI's camera here and we can look at the difference uh, versus the other videos we saw today. Okay, to wrap this up, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we'll play all the video from all of the cameras we talked about today. We'll start with the stock Sima X8C camera. Uh, we'll go to the Sima X8C camera with the with Sima's attempt at a stabilization mount. Then we will go to the $10 stabilization mount on the Sima X8C number one that we talked about. And from there, we'll do the next video on the Sima X8C number two with the gimbal. And then we will do the DJI Phantom, just all in a row to kind of give you a comparison of what you can expect and the differences there. Now, everything except for the DJI is going to be in 1080p. The DJI will be... Uh, 2.7k. Uh, I may have to downgrade that to 1080p. I don't know how my editing software is going to handle that. Um, that's probably going to be my next upgrade here after this camera is to kind of improve my editing software. I think it doesn't take anything over 1080p. So I may downgrade the DJI footage to 1080p and uh, see what happens there. But if there's no DJI footage in this video, it's because I couldn't get it downgraded in time and or could not get it downgraded in general and I wasn't able to plug it in, but there's plenty of YouTube videos on DJI footage. In fact, I'll drop a link to my before and after hurricane video that I shot with this guy here. That's why it's so dirty. I did a low flying shot through my yard and there was debris everywhere and it kind of kicked a bunch of it up and this turned into a lawnmower here and chopped up all the leaves. But uh, I'll go ahead and drop a link to that in there just in case. Uh, it's down here in the description. Um, you can check that out and see the video for yourself. But again, Average Guy Reviews, thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife for running the camera for me, and we'll see you next week.